Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Let me just check my audio here. Give me one second. All right, let me see. All right. I think it sounds good. We are good to go. All right. Happy Monday, everybody. Super, super busy day today. All right. Like my eyes might be a little red because I came from the gym right now. Well, about an hour ago. All right. So I am super, super pumped right now. All right. Um, just give me one second. I'm trying to, for today's episode, I want to put a download so you could follow along from going over this. So give me two minutes. Okay. T-Town in the house. I feel you. Long day today. All right. I'm right there with you. All right. Super Mondays. Mondays is always a crazy days because everything that was kind of bubbling from last week kind of just shows up today. Uh, let me just add today's download. I'm gonna put it right now in the in the description. YouTube. Uh, give me one second. Hopefully, I could put it on the description with no problem here. All right, because sometimes YouTube is a little finicky. All right. So I got man today's live. Okay. Uh, today's live, uh, today's download, it's only going to be available for download during the live. All right. So if you want to go download it, uh, I'm going to, I'm putting it right here. Uh, and then like a couple hours after, so on the night, we'll cut it off. All right. That's just kind of like a little treat for everybody that's here on the live that could make it. If you're on the replay, okay, it's all good. You can still follow along. All right, today's uh, download. Okay, I, I just stitched it out right now too, so it's all good. Uh, all right, that's why I'm like huffing, puffing, going upstairs, downstairs, trying to get this last second. Uh, today, bam, bam. All right, and then I'll show you what it is in one second. All right. All right. <clears throat> Let me see if I can show it to y'all right here. Bam, right here. Yep, we got the Dodgers. All right. Dodgers logo right here. You guys, uh, I just put it. Let me know if it's good. Uh, you could download it and then you could kind of, if you have Wilcom, then it's all good because you can open up the EMB file. But there's the DST file. And the PES file too. All right. And then there's other files that you need. Okay. But the working file, the file where you can actually edit, it's an EMB file that I have here. All right. Uh, reason why I'm putting this file out is just so you could really, what I like to do whenever I, I see a, um, whenever I have my files or anything that uh, I get or I buy. I like to just dissect it, see the settings, see the underlays, uh, try to get into the mind of a digitizer. Like, why did they do this? Why did they do that? Why did they want to go in this sequence rather than this sequence? Usually there's an answer for everything. And if you have like 100 cuts, right, or 100 trims, then you know it could have been, maybe it could have been done a little bit more efficiently. Okay, so I always like to analyze a uh, file. So, kind of show you right now. I just stitched it out right now. All right, uh, I did it in this color. I like to do uh, contrast colors for uh, samples. Okay, of course this isn't the 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 official colors, but I like to do contrast colors. That way, I could kind of. Um, I kind of see it like in different angles. It's kind of bright. My my lights are kind of bright. But I like to see it like in different angles. So if like you do stitch outs, right? Like embroidery, 
it has a different look when you see it in different angles. All right. So we're going to go over this design. All right. We're going to go over other texts. There's really, what do I got? I got two main, two main features we want to look for. All right. Probably there's probably even more, but two main ones when we're talking about script fonts. Okay, script fonts, uh, very classic type. Uh, I know a lot of the logos, they're going away from the script fonts, but I know um, just like design-wise, uh, clothing companies, right? They like that script, like it really stands out, but corporate, like kind of corporate America, they're kind of getting away from the old school script fonts just because they need something that's gonna fit like on your on your watch, right? Like the design. That's why everything is going block lettering. But of course, if you learn script fonts, script lettering, okay, it's just an art that will always it's gonna like disappear and then it comes back, right? It comes back like with a vengeance and it always stands out, right? Especially like this one here. All right, Dodgers. Look at that. This is like uh, a design that was created like in the 1800s. Okay, and it's still going strong. Still strong logo here. All right. Of course, names. I like script fonts, especially with names. I know with names, um, anytime we're doing like, let's say, for example, scrubs, right? Scrubs, I think um, it looks very clean when it has like a clean script font. All right. Um, but today, that's kind of like our focus today. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it nice and short. All right. Because uh, we've been talking about text. To me, text is like money maker right there. If you learn how to do text. So we already talked about like the block fonts, the, the serifs, type fonts. Today, script. All right. Really, if you master fonts text, script fonts, block fonts, okay? That's really money maker just because names, right? Everybody likes to see their name embroidered. It's like something, if you show somebody their name embroidered, they will not throw it away. I promise you that. If you give somebody a hat and it has their name like on the side, especially uh, certain fonts, especially certain script fonts, Okay. I guarantee you they will never throw that garment, especially if it's a hat. Okay. That's like number one gift you can ever give somebody. Okay. Uh, so I do want to talk about because script fonts, right? Script fonts, they have a lot of character. Okay. A lot, a lot of character that we got. Okay. Let me just show you right here. Right. It's like a lot of moving pieces. When you see it, when I see it, especially in embroidery, it's like a story. I'm 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 reading a story that a digitizer did, and you there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. Where did this where did this digitizer or whoever designed it? This is me. This is how I see things like when I'm at the mall or anything. I see embroidery designs. Like I stop and look at certain designs and I'll just zone out for like five minutes and the design is kind of like talking to me, right? Where did this design start? Okay, what colors started? Where Where's the backside of this? Where's the middle? And then where's the end? Where did they end it? Where did they jump, right? All these cool questions, but especially with script fonts, all right? Uh, we do a quick shout out here. All right. Looks like we got a jam packed house. And then, like always, just a reminder hit that like. Okay. Let YouTube know we are in the house today, ready to learn. Mondays is reserved specifically for embroidery. All right. Rain, snow, rain, shine, hail, snow. Okay. We're going to be here. All right. Kingsbury Craft, Washington, Bremerton, Washington. El Dell, New Jersey. We got Barb in the house. North Central Minnesota. Teat Town. GMG. All right.
got everybody. Damien from the UK. Okay, so we got the the UK checking in. Mohammed from Pakistan. Keith Holm, Tennessee. Mashid. Luis Guzman. All right. Vonda, Myrtle Beach. All right, we got the East Coast in the house. All right, man. Wesley from Alberta. All right, that just sounds cold. Up Canada. Juan. Like this hat right here. Yeah. This one was like from, uh, I think from one of the lives from like 2022. We worked on this one right here. I see. Yeah, I have this. I have like the file. I got to like, uh, I completed it. I just have to stitch it all out. Um, Chino in the house. MM Customs. All right. Ariel's. 402. Cindy. All right. How you doing? All right. Oh, wow. Jam packed. And then we'll start out with this question because this one's a good one. We got Christy Ewing, right? This one's always the fun one with auto digitizing. Can you fix or re-digitize an auto an auto digitized font? I'm having a re so I think when you use auto digitizing first, I think auto digitizing is is just like a, a marketing add-on that the software gives. Right. It's like a selling point, like, hey, you can, there's this feature called auto digitizing and it'll do everything automatic for you. OK, uh, for the most part. It's actually going to make you work two times longer, OK, because you're going to have to you're going to have to auto digitize. Then you have to go behind it and fix a lot of the digitizing that the auto digitizer did. And then what I don't like about it is that it adds tons and tons of extra nodes. So it's harder to make little simple changes. So what I'm going to say is um, I don't like auto digitizing. I'll rather just start it from scratch or like delete it and work on it right now. All right. Oh, Cindy King, Odessa, Texas. Yep. Wesley, yep, our new is it's cold right there. Linda Woods, Texas in the house. All right, let's get this party started. So, all right, looks like, uh, all right, looks like the file is good to go right there. All right, you could just open it up and kind of follow along. I'll kind of get to it in a bit. All right, I do got some pictures here. You know how much I love pictures. All right, let me see. Um, all right, let's see. Switch this over. Let's see if I can switch this over right here. Bam, go small. All right, let me see. Looks like you got a good view right there. Okay, so when we're talking about script fonts, okay, script fonts here. Couple things when we see this, all right. Uh, we're going to talk about just letters and individual, but here we're seeing them grouped up, all right. Anytime we see them grouped up, usually the capital letter is kind of like on its own, and then it's the small letters that are kind of combining together, all right. Um, and th these pictures, they're they're from the uh, MLB website, okay. So these are the professionals. I like to see. I always and like. For motivation and kind of to get a sense of what's on top of what, I like to go to the websites with all the pros and get a view because to me, this is like the, the gold standard right here. Okay. And you'll be surprised that a lot of times uh, the professional websites, the, you could see little small mistakes that they've made or little changes that I know I would have made. Okay. But for the most part, Everything looks sharp. Here we are super zoomed in. Okay. So anytime you're zoomed in this much, you're gonna find little small stuff. Okay, no matter where, where you're at, right? Like you could see some some puffs sticking out like a tad bit. That's always gonna happen. All right. Um, but one thing that I want to see here, all right, when I'm looking at this, and this is uh 
the two items that we're going to talk about today when we're talking about script fonts. All right. When we're looking, let's say, for example, let's focus on the letter E. Okay, let's focus on the letter E right here. Let's bring in the E right here. If we're just worried about the E right here, all right, we'll make this one the easy one. How many overlaps do we have on the E? All right, so here, when we look at it, we have one overlap. So this bar down here, right, it goes wraps around. And then this guy goes over it right here, right? If you see that there. One thing that, that we're looking out for, anytime we have overlaps, okay, what we wanna look out for, two things here. Make sure we don't have a gap, okay? You see the gap, there's no gap here in between the overlap, okay? Uh, there's certain items that we wanna we want to do in the digitizing to avoid any gaps because there it's easily can happen. We can easily have a gap anytime we have an overlap. And the second thing we don't have that's possible is bumps. Okay, because if if we go straight, right, straight sand stitch, and then another sand stitch on top of that, there's possibility of we kind of get like a little speed bump, right? Because there's thread under, and then we're going to go right over it. And there's a possibility that we might get like a noticeable looking speed bump, right? If that makes sense. All right. And then, so that's kind of like the easy one that we see, right? The R, right? We have this bar coming in from the E. It transitions in, and then we have the R overlapping this part so that part of the r all right uh the d small lowercase d we have the rounded part here right actually we have the connector from the o coming in we have the circle from the d overlapping that all right they have a smooth transition that's what we're looking for is a smooth transition no gapping and then a smooth transition down here from the bar going down, all right? So you can kind of see there's no gapping. And we're gonna talk about how to go about eliminating any type of gap, all right? So that's all what it's all about. It's the, it's the transition into the next letter and avoiding gaps and avoiding extra bumps on our letter. Now, here, the real, the real challenging one is this G, right? The G, how many overlaps do we have on this G? All right. And just as a, um, just kind of like an overview of how I go about reading my designs. Let me show you my design right here. All right. You already know I like to print out designs. Okay. I like to print out designs and see where my overlaps are gonna be, okay? So let me see if I show you this G. I actually counted where my overlaps is and you can see how I drew. Hold on, let me see if I can get it, yeah. You have a good view right there. All right. So you can see how I put the O, the D, the E, the R, the S, how I'm kind of like my game plan. But the G, you could see how many all right, and then when I counted it on the G, let's go back to this screen. All right, when I counted it on the G, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight overlaps. Okay, eight overlaps that's happening right here. All right, doesn't seem like a lot, but it is, all right, because we got this round part from the G. Okay, we got one up here and then two on the bottom. Then we got one connecting here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So, yeah, at least eight. Okay, at least eight. All right, bam. So, I know with over time, 
all right because i know digitizers they don't have to break down the design like i like to do it just because i want my stitch angles like i want to get a good view of my how my stitch angle is going to be now not every project requires it and if you're designing for speed right let's say you're you're a digitizer and that's what you do like your your sole focus is only digitizing then you might skip this part where you're kind of designing it and you know making the little i like to do it just to make sure i'm getting a smooth transition in there all right uh, all right let's see what other pictures i got so this is the white the all white on it okay sometimes it's kind of hard to see all white okay because you really don't get the the shadow of certain color threads okay but you do see some of the overlaps all right but i do got other colors here right so we got this one here and same thing um so anytime i'm looking at a file this close i could find little small mistakes okay um or you you really don't have to call mistakes but they're there are little things where you could catch right for example here on the g we got a little bump on the g okay on the e okay we got we kind of got the e kind of getting pulled in a tad bit here okay little small ticky tack stuff okay nothing too big nothing that the normal customer will catch okay course when you're zooming this this close you're gonna find stuff like that right it's just natural that it's gonna happen but what i do want to see right because when you're seeing a design just flat like a flat logo you're not gonna see what's on what's on top and what's below like this g right this g you can see the swoosh goes over it right so it's good to see like these samples so you can see what goes and then you could tell how the g it goes over the G and into the E. All right. So that's a big question here is what's oh, what's what's on top and what's on bottom. OK, especially here on this D. Right. Because maybe sometimes a customer might, might give you a. Um, he might give you a file, but it's never been embroidered. So either you have to make that decision. Right. For example, this D here. OK, this part of the D is overlapping right the back side so you could see it there because it could have gone both ways right you could have made this d behind it but it looks more solid like this where this part's going down this part's going over it okay so it's always important to know what's on top what's on bottom here if we look at the s okay you could there's times where certain hats they're made different Okay, they're made different. Like here, this S is created here by, like the S is created by itself. And then the swoosh, right? The swoosh is kind of on its own, all right? And then there's other Dodgers. Let me see if it's the one before. Like this one here, the one that we just saw before. The S stops here, and then the swoosh kind of begins back up here. So within, different hats maybe it's different manufacturers they have a different file okay but here where you could kind of start seeing different files being made okay here the s doesn't go all the way it stops here and then the swoosh kind of begins here that's kind of how i digitize mine when i did art when i did mine uh, i digitized it like that all right it's all decision making stuff okay so there's the other one here uh, I like to see just different colors to kind of get a different view. All right, so you can kind of see this one here. Bam, kind of everything follows the same thing. The G, that's where we get a lot of the overlap. Okay, I think the G is a good example of overlapping, knowing the importance of uh, what goes on top of what. All right, and here the same thing, the S, you can see the S starts over here. The swoosh kind of starts back here, all right? So you'll see different designs with different kind of little small differences within the design. Uh, 
this one. Let me see. Band. So this is another white one. Okay, this one doesn't have the swoosh. So you can kind of see the G going all across right there. All right, bam, bam. And then this is a different one, but this is, uh, so right here, what, what, what I wanna focus on is just the transitions from like the G to the E, okay? The G to the E, you can kind of see like, it doesn't have a super smooth transition like right here to here. Right. But overall, fairly pretty good. All right. And then let me pull up the next one. Next slide up here. All right. Give me one sec. Actually, let me uh, pull up the the files here. Okay. Uh, All right, so I do have this font here. Uh, this one's called Gelato Lux, okay? Gelato Lux. If you see like this D, it looks like the Dodger one, right? That's, it's a little bit more wide than the Dodger one. Let me see it. Yeah, it's a little bit more uh, thicker, like the, the font. Very clean one, but... Uh, it's like a good example here, all right? Um, so I do want to digitize like all these letters right here. If I do, if I have time this week, then I'll definitely put it out. All right, um, let me see what I got. Um, B. All right, let's talk about some letters, okay? Letters, like every letter, let's go on the big side right here. All right. Uh, every letter to me, like, has its own characteristics. All right. It's like we already know the easy letters, the simple ones, right? The O. Uh, here, we don't have any overlap. This is one of the few letters here in this alphabet that doesn't have an overlap. Okay. Usually it connects with itself, but here, Kind of goes around and it kind of dips in okay but kind of letters have its own characteristics uh the r kind of like the one i have right this one one of my favorite letters here if we're looking at this r okay how many how many objects do you think we would have in this letter r right here if we're looking at it right if we're putting in our if we're putting on our um uh, digitizer brain our digitizer hat okay and we want to break it up right how many objects do we have right and we have exactly or not exactly because somebody could do something crazy right but here we have three objects all right three objects and we could we'll digitize this one in a bit but we have this one, the top, the R, uh, this part going down, then the one going diagonal, right? And then the P, how many do we have with the P? So it's the same thing as the R, right? Same thing with the R, the P, we have two. And, and the big question is uh, the overlap, right? The overlap. How many overlaps do we have? Well, we have one, right? Right here, this area, we're going to have a uh, overlap. And the question that we have, right, as digitizers or even embroiderers, right? Because sometimes, um, sometimes, believe it or not, let's say you have to digitize a logo that's just this P, right? Believe it or not, 99% of everybody that's on this on this class today, okay, 99% of everybody here can digitize this P, whether you know it or not, okay? Whether you know it or not. You can digitize this P if you really, really, really had to, okay? All right. So it's good to know 
right? Let's go ahead. Let's actually digitize it real quick. Okay, so if we got to digitize this, what's going on top and what's on bottom, right? Here it doesn't play a big role like some other letters, okay? But if we have to decide what would be on top or which, which object would go first, what object would go second, right? What, what, there's no right or wrong answer, right? There's, you could either do the, the top part of the P first or second, okay? Um, what I would do, okay, what I would do, we could digitize this, the, the stem first, okay? All right, we could do it both ways, all right? We could do it both ways. I'm gonna use the column B. Okay, really the more traditional that probably a lot of people use is column A. Uh, anytime we have, anytime we have uh, our designs that are curving like this, I love the, the column B, all right? Because it's not much thinking that I have to do, all right? Now we need to know how do we want this this portion to turn? Do we want to have it like a super sharp turn or do we want to have like a gradual turn? All right. So if we do a gradual, all right. Really, it's the, the more clicks are like here in this where we're changing, like our angles are changing. But once we get up here and we got like long, smooth strokes. Right, and then it comes. And then here you see how it didn't come straight. We could fix that afterwards, All right here. Once we get towards the end that we kind of kind of zoom in. All right, we do one side first. Then we're doing the second side, okay? Usually like the end corners where we're doing that, that turn. All right. Oh. And then once it gets longer, and then with this column B, we do one side first, second side second, and then the stitch angles, all right? All right, because right now it looks all weird, all right? So control, control uh, H. So you can see how I moved the, the thread because it's kind of blocking my my view right there. So I'm going to put it just on outline view, control H. All right. And then on my bottom left hand corner, there's a prompt that's telling me, hey, enter angle point one. All right. This is where we want our angle. So you can see like how I showed you on my drawings when I went, when I kind of go beforehand and I kind of see how my stitch angles go. All right. Here, I'm just setting my stitch angles. That's why I like this column B because I kind of just set my stitch angles. All right. And here on the curves, very important to um, to kind of get a nice clean uh, stitch angles. And then I could go back and fix this part here. All right. I could just add that node. Bring that up. All right. Put another node right here. All right, got it like close to perfect. Bang. All right, nearly perfect is trace. All right. Bang. All right. Of course, you don't got like here. This is good enough, right? Like, really, like nobody's going to know this hair of a millimeter, right? But you can still pick it up if you really want it perfect. All right, bam. All right. So now you could just look at your angles, kind of make sure everything's good. Okay. Um, something else that you might want to do, okay, is right now, just add all my. All right, you already know my three boxes that I like. Uh, object properties, these are all my settings, okay? I pretty much control all my settings with the object properties. Um, my color object, 
So here, here I could see all my uh, like the order of operation, my sequence. Okay, and then here my design information. Uh, at the very end, I like to see how many trims I have, how many stitches. Right, that's always important. Um, okay, what I want to show you here. So if we if we select this part of the peak, let's do this. Um, Let's do like a crazy color right here, All right? All right. Usually I take out the underlay. I, I leave the underlay to the very end. Okay. Um, but you can do sometimes what I like to do. Do a walking stitch. Uh, you could do a walking stitch like to your first. To your first where you want this to start. So H, push H. Here, it's telling me I want to end here, but really I, I could end here, right in the middle. Then I could start here in this corner. All right, let's put this all the way in the top. And then when you push the replay, oops, hold on. Slow it down a bit. I, I want to show you one thing that's kind of important here. Let's remove. All right. So I just so I did that walking stitch. Oops. Let's pause it real quick. Let me show you the threads. All right. Let's rewind. Push play. Okay. It's gonna do that walking stitch first. All right, you see how I did that walking stitch? Reason sometimes that I like to do a walking stitch first before I go into my actual object is so it could do the 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 tie-in here in the beginning. So it's somewhere hidden, somewhere inside, down inside. All right, so that's just me hiding this tie-in, and then when it does the actual stitch, it's just gonna cover it. All right. Um, and then here is where we could add our underlay. Okay. Right now we could just put an edge run or a center run. All right, edge runs, you gotta be careful with edge run when we're doing curves, especially like this area here. All right, so you can see what the edge run does. All right, and it's kind of like the center run, right? But instead of running through the center, it's gonna run through the edges. Now, what could happen, especially once we get to these narrow uh, areas here, there's a possibility if it gets too narrow, okay, there's certain fonts, uh, there's certain fonts that get very, very narrow in certain areas, okay, you could have that, that, that underlay kind of slipping out, all right? So if you have Wilcom, you could actually adjust your edge run, like if you want to make it more in the middle, It'll probably go like a 50 and it'll it'll kind of go in a, a tad bit all right all right let's continue this one here all right so h so i i start up here i'm starting up here you can kind of see my green i just throw it all the way up here but really it's the same as this and then you could kind of Stop it here, right? And then we could start doing this, the top part of the P, all right? Really, there's no right or wrong answer of, of which one would go first. And I'll tell you why I chose to have this one go second, okay? Because instead of having any overlap, I'm gonna have this sand stitch just push in. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, and one thing that I want to tell you, um, really, the more logos you do, the more you'll notice that a lot of logos, a lot of text, uh, they fall into like the same similar categories. For example, this this logo here, it reminds me, especially this part where we started here in this corner, it reminds me of the Phillies logo. Okay, 
So a lot of times you do it once, you'll hit another project that will remind you of certain logos that you've worked on. All right. And then here, I know this sand stitch is going to push in a bit. So I'm going to just go in like a tad bit inside. All right. Enter. Now I'm going to do the second side. All right. So instead of having any overlap, this sand stitch is going to push in. All right. So if I would have done it the other way around, let me see. Yeah, I would have had to, I would have had to, uh, I would have had a uh, overlap in that area. Okay. But since I only have two and we get to decide, then it's, it's an easier call. Sometimes you don't get to decide. Sometimes just naturally the way the design is, um, you'll kind of know what to go first or second, all right? All right, um, and then here, I get over here, and I want this sand stitch to push in a tad bit, okay? We wanna have this, you could see like this overlap, how I'm going over that, um, because the first part is gonna pull, and then this part's gonna push in, all right? Um, and then same thing, my 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 stitch angles are all all over the place. So control H. And I know this up here. So you gotta find like your critical points. I know at this point, I'm gonna be at 90 degrees. I know here I'm gonna be at zero. I know here I'm gonna be at zero. All right. So these three are like numbers that are locked in. Right. Everything else I could kind of just kind of anticipate how it's going to be. So here I want it to kind of be as flat as possible. All right, and here. Bam, all right, so it fixed itself. All right, bam. So, if I push it here, so I'll do that first line first. So let's kind of do a replay of what just happened gonna do this walking stitch here first it's gonna do this part it's gonna transition here and then let me just get all of the same underlay so actually I'm just gonna do a center run and a double zigzag all right and just to make sure that I have a proper uh, so I don't have any trims or anything. I could just put apply closest joint. Okay, so let me control Z. Let me erase that, what just happened. Um, you can see how there was a cut here. As soon as I put closest joint, it's going to take it away. Apply closest joint. Bam. Okay, it just has that final cut at the very end. All right. Oh, uh, put it bam right there. All right, so looks good. Uh, other settings that we could uh, work on. Okay, uh, this is a good one here. All right, so let me go on the bit on the screen right here. Sometimes there are certain fonts, and I've noticed this with keyboard fonts a lot. Okay, especially if you're working with the smaller fonts. Um, sometimes you want to make it. It's not like the correct word but i'll just use it because it kind of has the same meaning okay but sometimes you want the letter to be a little thicker right really what you're doing is making the columns a little wider okay so of course we can always play with the pool comp so of course uh will come pool comp is the standard is 0.17 okay usually most of the time you're good with that, right? That's just like your natural uh, pool compensation. Sometimes with script, what I like to do, I like to give it a little extra more pool compensation, right? Especially certain fonts, keyboard fonts. I, I'll usually do it with keyboard font. Okay, I'm gonna kind of go 0.4, okay? Kind of, it sounds over-exaggerated. It's just like an extra um. All right, little extra umph right here. Okay, but you could change it like um, three zero. All right, 
doesn't have to be all that. All right, man, everything looks good. Then we could push play. All right. Oops. Let me remove the. Yeah. Man, it's going to go here. All right, this heat. This one, yeah, it's doing the. This is the settings that I use for the Dodger logo. Uh, center run with a with a with a double zigzag. Sometimes, if you feel like, hey, uh, I think it's getting it's it's bunching up too much, or I think I don't need that much uh, thread, then you could tone it down with uh, either uh, lower the density or remove some of the underlay. Okay, so you can see how what I want to show, what I want to pinpoint here, is that it made one object first and then it went to the next object okay so you can see how it's doing it separate now sometimes what what could be very convenient very helpful all right i'm going to remove this walking stitch that i put in the beginning all right sometimes it's not necessary especially if we have a lot of underlay already uh, i'm going to select this p again okay uh what i'm going to do i'm going to branch it all right, well, let me show you why I'm gonna branch it. So if I select this letter P and I'm messing with my underlay here, so I remove all my underlay, right? I select it. It doesn't It doesn't give me the option to select by shape, okay? But this select by shape here, very, very useful right here, all right? Because what this is gonna do, this is gonna allow me to do the whole underlay like in one shot, all right? So like how I just showed you, it did each object separate. That's why it's, it's by default, it's just by segment, okay? By segment is just doing it one by one, all right? But if I wanna do it all, just like how your traditional fonts, your, your keyboard fonts is, okay, we can make it like that. The secret here is through branching, so if, uh, my hotkey for branching is I. Okay, so I'm gonna push I. Bottom left, it says, where do you wanna start my entry point? I can say, hey, I wanna start here, this area. Where do you wanna end? I can end right here, this corner, okay? It's, it's your decision where you wanna start, where you wanna end, all right? Bam, now when I select that P, All right. All right. Hold on. Should have let me. It should have gave me the option by segment. All right. Let me try that one more time. Oh, Control Z. Oh, okay. I I think I know why. Because it might be. Bing bing. All right. Uh, I. That's usually like how I do mine. Oh, I know why. No, uh, edge run. Oh, okay. It wants it to be an edge run. Start as a. Yeah, when I put center run, it takes away zigzag. No, double zigzag. All right, so it wants it to be a edge run, all right? Which is all good, all right? So we collect by shape and what's this gonna do it's gonna do it all together so i'll show you what it is uh, i don't want it to be so running so close to the edges all right so we could you could put it like 0.5 you can see how close it gets to the center especially on the curves all right that's kind of where you want to avoid it um sometimes you can mess around like if you see that your underlay is slipping out of your text this is more like with the smaller text you could either go either two millimeters uh, up down to like 1.5 if you really have something small, All right? But you can go two. Um, and then as your second underlay, you could put zigzag. And now let's push play here, All right? You'll see how it's gonna make it all the letters. So bam, now it's gonna create a whole letter. And what this helps, is to avoid gaps because now it created like a free bridge right here. 
right? You see how it's created like its own bridge. So now like the letter is kind of locking in, reduces potential uh, gapping, especially with certain letters, right? So you'll see how it's doing all this underlay right now. All right, it's doing these walking stitches. And then you see how we put, um, we kind of changed up the walking stitches. Okay, you can control that. So now when it, now it's gonna start stitching, right? The normal thing. So you can see how it kind of locked, it locked this portion in with the design, all right? So the, the possibilities of getting gaps has now minimized, right? By making everything all one piece. All right, so sometimes you don't have to create like bridges and extra stuff if you just combine it. So what we did here, we kind of made the equivalent of a keyboard font, okay? Because this is kind of like how keyboard fonts act uh, when you do them. All right, so let's speed this up. It's gonna come, bam, transition, come down, and then finish where we told it to finish. All right, so very useful there. Man, sorry. That was kind of like what I did with this A also. All right. And then you see how it has, and it does have a lot of underlay here. Okay. Um, if you're good with the underlay, you could probably take away some of the density. Okay. With certain files, certain files. Okay. All right. One more, one more. Actually, I'll talk about it when I talk about the Dodger one here. All right, that's just the B right here. All right. So that's kind of, let me see. All right, so that's like the basics of curved letters. All right, now let's go into our Dodger logo. Okay, let me take out this info one so we get some space. Right, of course, classic one. Very good uh, lessons learned on this one here. We could check the size. So the design on this one. Okay, so I have this file. Let me go on the big screen right here. All right. All right, I get to um, Cindy. Why did you take the underlay from the B? Oh, I the B I didn't I didn't even I right now when I was pushing play I didn't pay attention to it. Uh, that was one that I was just kind of digitizing quick before we started. All right, so I'll go back. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Bam, B. Yeah, it doesn't have under under any underlay. Uh, no reason. I just didn't. I usually put my underlay at the very end. So uh, we could put same thing, right? You could put center run, zigzag, all right, double six starts, regular zigzag. All right, this way it's gonna do it one by one, unless if I if I branch it. All right. Um, all right. Uh, sizing here, four point five. Oh yeah, but I want to tell you guys. So this file here, I have it. I have it for free download right now um, during the live. Okay, so if you are here during the live, download it. That way you could kind of follow along. You could kind of measure stuff. I love measuring stuff. I like it's two things. I like to do. I like to digitize the actual design. I like to stitch it out, and I like to measure and see what's good, what's not, what can be changed. All right, so this file here right now, it's currently available for download, free download, just so you can follow along, okay? So it'll probably be available like today and then like sometime tonight, I'll just take it off and, you know, all right? So when I, this is the first draft too, all right? So I just did it like right before. Always things that I would change, Okay, there's, there's things that I would change and like, believe it or not, okay, 
believe it or not, even if you send out your files to get digitized, there's always little small things you could kind of change, especially depending on the garment that you're doing, that you're working on. Something can, uh, where do we download from? It's in the description, should be, should be in the description. So I just put it in the description. Let me see. Uh, hold on. Let me close out and then let me reset. I might have to. Yeah, if it doesn't show up in the description, you might have to um, restart it, restart the browser. Okay, because I, I didn't have it and I just did it right now. It says uh, today's download. All right, so it's there. All right, so you can follow along. Okay, but. All right. Um... Okay, so it's there. Um, yeah, to follow along, let's go back. All right, now we're all good here. Okay. Uh, now here, so I got it as a vector form. And the reason why I like to work with vector, because look, I could zoom in all the way in. Look at that, my, like my lines stay clean, right? I I I actually, I actually vectorized it real quick. Okay, so it's not like 100% perfect, but it's good, All right? But for the most part, it doesn't like blur up. So you see how the lines stay clean. Uh, that's the good thing if you can have your um, if your customers have the files as vectors, All right? But if they got JPEG, it's all good. All right? It's just other ways to do things. All right, so that's the size right there. We're looking at height 2.5, 4.7 width 4.5. All right, let's lock this up. Bam. And then we could dim it. All right, bam, bam. All right, let's start with the easy one, okay? This is the easy one, the D, the letter D right here, right? So the questions that we have, okay, anytime we're talking about script, we need to answer two questions. Okay. How many how many objects do I have? Okay. Well, the first question is where's my overlap? Okay, where's my overlap? And usually when we're talking about overlaps, we're talking about kind of uh, cutoffs. All right, so we know here is our overlap, like this area right here. All right, so if we're looking at this, let me just kind of show you where this overlap is happening, right? It's gonna go around. We got a nice tight curve, All right? I probably won't let me do it right now. Let me see if it does. Usually the column B, it doesn't like doing, um, It doesn't like overlaps. Now I kind of show you the way around it. So let's say I'm doing this overlap right here. Oh, all right. I think I don't know if they changed it because before it didn't let me. It didn't let me do that. All right, set these stitch angles, all right? Because it looks all weird. All right. If we were to keep it like this. Right. Underlay. I take out all the underlay so it's easier to see. All right. H. Remember, everything is adjustable. In embroidery, if there's something you don't like, everything is adjustable. So you see how it kind of went out of the tracks right here? Could bring this guy back in. Bring everything back in. And add a node. So like the more tight of a turn, the more nodes we need. So we didn't have enough nodes. Now we know we got, we're good here. All right. And if you're, uh, if you use uh, like Illustrator before, then digitizing is like an easy transition. All right. And 
All right now, the problem here. All right, the problem here, since we got this overlap that we just that just happened right here. Okay, uh, potentially we might get this. We might get a little bump right here. Okay, we might get a little bump up here since we have thread coming down and then thread coming over it. All right. Uh, another thing that we might have is potentially this area right here might get pulled. Okay, so let me put my dots here. So you see these dots? This is where the needle's coming in. So you can see down this line. Let me put a line right here. See how this these needles, they're kind of coming through this area right here. So all those needles potentially is going to make like a little hole right here. Because our thread is running very close to perpendicular, right? So we got to figure out a way to avoid a gap right here. Okay, we got to avoid a gap right here. All right, you see that? We want this thread. So the thread, the thread running this way. You see this thread running like this way? I'm putting it like a red color. It's going to show the equivalent. You see this thread right here? Instead of coming in at this angle, H, we want it to come in a little bit steeper like this way. All right. That way, these needles can't just pull our thread. All right, so we want them, we want that thread to come in at an angle instead of coming straight perpendicular where we're going to get a, a, a curve. All right. All right, so we throw delete this. All right, so we have to anticipate, we want to anticipate where that, where that uh, overlap is going to happen. All right, so let me go ahead and I'm going to, Digitize this this part first, All right? So let's go up here, bang bang. All right. Now when I get here, to the, we're gonna call this like the intersection, okay? The intersection of D. All right. So I do one side, do the next side, okay? Uh, I think the column B takes like an extra couple seconds longer than your traditional one, but uh, with curves, really very useful with curves. Now, here I'm gonna cover our area, right? I'm gonna pat. I'm gonna go past it a bit, then I'm gonna drop down, kind of like at this angle. Control H to do my uh, stitch angles. So you kind of want to anticipate. I'm gonna do it blue so it's easier to see. All right, so you see how my stitch angles kind of dropped a bit, right? Um, of course, take out this underlay, H, and then we could control this area here, right? If you feel like you were kind of too deep in, All right? But the main thing is we want to change these angles coming down. So you can see how we kind of change the angle. Now, potentially when we do that wrap around, we're not going to get that that pulling of our threads or less pulling. All right. Now we can just finish. All right. So instead of so here, this is kind of like the or part. All right, bang. So remember here, since it's like a tight turn, requires more nodes. All right, more nodes. And then once it opens up, now we can do less nodes. And really, when, once it gets wide like this, you want to use less nodes. It's Sometimes you have to do some edits, and the less nodes you have, the easier it is to make edits. 
right. And we did one side. Now here we want we kind of want like the same the same transition. We want this to kind of come in like that. All right. I probably went in too much. I could fix it afterwards. All right. Once we're here, now we could do. Man, yeah, this game perfect. Um, so I see Karen Blair. Your question: uh, How do I get this on Hatch? How do I get this to work on? Now, I don't really. I don't know if Hatch has a column B. I can't remember. I haven't used Hatch in years. Um, if not, then you got to use the other. Just got to use the traditional um, column A. All right, so like once again, the angles look all weird, all right? We could just fix that up. I just take that out. We got these and then, oops, I don't know why I did that. All right, oh, control H. All right, you kind of can anticipate the angles that you want your, right? And then you've seen like my drawing, I kind of already have an idea. I draw like how my stitch angle should look, but really you kind of have a feel just for your natural stitch angles. Bam, all right. And then sometimes, all right, so I'm starting from up here, just checking. You kind of uh, get a good view and see if the stitch angles make sense. All right, so like right here, sometimes when it gets like real close and tight, you might have to change stuff. All right, bang. All right, and then here, we're getting too much overlap right here. Pull this in, I'll tap it. All right. The main thing is you want these angles to kind of point inward of tap in. All right. See that? All right, bang. All right, so that's the main thing here, all right? It's the overlaps is just making space, all right? We could always make space. There isn't too much room here. Let's see the M from area to area. On millimeters, um, 2.45. Okay, so we really don't have too much space to play with here on the overlap. Um, sometimes it's not even worth it trying to make like a little gap in between. Sometimes it just makes more sense to kind of go over it like a second time around. All right, you might get a little bump. Okay, just kind of check it out, see how it is, play by ear and see how it looks. All right, but for here, we're good. Okay, um, so this, this here is the overlap portion. All right now, let's go into the transitions because it's two things, two things with script. It's the overlaps and the transitions. So now these lowercase letters, it's all transitions. Okay, it's all transition. So if we're looking at the O, right, we're gonna use our embroidery eyes and we're gonna say, hey, what goes first? Is it the O or that little loop that's going over to the D? Of course, it's the O, right? The O goes first and then we're gonna transition with that to the D, all right? Uh, let me see if, I, if I'm seeing some questions here. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Karen, I downloaded your stuff, but didn't get this to practice. All right. I don't know if you could open. Actually, you would. Uh, this would be a good question. Um, 
can you open the EMB files in Hatch? Okay, because if not, then I might have to uh, save a different version. I think there's a version for Hatch, if I'm not mistaken. But if you can open it in Hatch, uh, let me know. Um, and then um, Denny's. Hi, thanks for like just a question. Is there an advantage of column B over column A, a specific kind of design? All right, this is a good question, all right? Good, good question right here. Let me go right here. All right. Uh, reason why I like B, for me personally, it's less thinking. I could focus more on the, on the trace because you're doing it in two pieces. You're tracing it first. And then you're adding the stitch angles. Whereas in A, you're doing everything in one shot. You're tracing it and setting the stitch angles on one at the same time. All right. So uh, to me, I like it's all preference, right? It's all preference. Um, whatever you like most. It's whatever you practice most. Okay. I know most design, uh, most softwares have column A. So by the time you master column A, like you just stay to that. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, column B is just super easy with curves. All right. All right. Let me let me do this O. All right. Um, what I want to do, I'll do this transition first, and then. So let me see. Bam. I already forgot how I did my my original Dodger one. All right. Um, hold on. I got my main one here. This is the one that's on download. Okay, that's what I thought. All right. So I put the O here. All right. So I didn't go wide. All right. Cool. Because there's so many ways to do things. Oh, yeah. Came out good. All right. So I'm looking at the, the one that I just, the free download. All right. Yeah. All right. Good transition. Take that. All right. Because I'm telling you, there's so many different ways to do something. All right. So it's going to go into the A. So we want to transition here. All right, and then you know what I do? I go past a bit and then drop down. Control H. The jingles are already good, but. Now underlay, you could just take it out. Okay. Um, bam. All right. And then let me just do this. Yeah, here. So you can see how I cut it up to O. All right, cool. Just want to make sure I'm going to do this just the way I did it before. All right. Now I did this part. Now I'm going to just do this O portion. Oops, backspace. I don't gotta go too much. All right, bang. Tight turn. Then once it opens up. And then. So I'm just tracing it one side first. Oh, I know I'm gonna come in here. This part's gonna drop down. All right, so now this is side B that I'm doing because first you do one side, then you do the other side, then you do the stitch angle. And one thing about digitizing, um, it's not like the most prettiest, most entertaining thing in the world. All right, um, hold on, let me take out this. 
But once you understand it, like to me, it's the best thing ever because having control of your designs or not only having control of your designs, but having control of your edits. That was my big thing when I learned when I learned digitizing is being able to because what would get me mad, especially on the weekends, because that's where I did uh, where I still do a lot of most of my work is on the weekends. Um, you can't just get a hold of digitizers on the weekend. Right. So sometimes you just got to learn it. And make simple edits. OK. OK, we're going to go one two, three, then sequence it, right? Bam, now it's leading into the D. You see how this, um, this little portion of the O is, is kind of gradually going into the D, all right? Now this D, so when we look at the D, how many, how many objects do we have in the D, right? We have two. We have the circle portion and the straight line going down all right so all we're going to do is take it step by step and once you get the first like the first concept of the transition going in okay we're pretty much doing all the same thing over and over all right we're just taking it uh object by object so we're taking this okay tight turn all right anytime we have tight turns we're going to need more nodes All right, Bang. and then when I come in here, I kind of want to dive in, right? I want to dive in there, bam, and now kind of anticipate how, how you want the stitches to run in, all right? So this is go going over that, that little portion of the O. Right. Then we come in. And now we're kind of kind of directing the, the angle that we want to come in. All right. So if I'm looking like this, I kind of want to come in like this. All right. Control H, angles. Sometimes the angles looks like it's good, but just go ahead and Kind of give it the all right, cool. And then you could check you could check your work. All right, we could check our work. Oops. Keep on forgetting to take out the angles. The underlay. We could check our work by looking at our so here you see how it didn't go perfect. Really it doesn't make it's it's really no big deal, but if you really want to get it perfect, right? Pull this down a bit. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm digitizing, uh, maybe because I don't digitize as a service, that I really take my time in doing like this little small details. Um, but I know if you're doing this as a service, you're probably letting a lot of this stuff go. Like you're not doing it super perfect, but certain customers, right? You want to make sure they're being treated good and their logos. Because if you if you create a logo good like the first time, you don't ever have to worry about it again, right? It's like once you got something down packed perfect, is good to go like for life like there's logos that i have that i'm good with it forever like i don't i don't really have to revisit it too much right so you could get it perfect right we could have taken our time a little bit more on the but we're all good here oh i'm sorry for leaving this the, the kind of zoned out didn't see the screen here Sorry about that. Um, let me see. Uh, and then Cindy, does it, and so it does not matter how many notes. Now, now you want to have the, really, 
you want to have the least nodes possible. Okay. But when you have tight turns, now you need more, more nodes. Okay. So here, let me show you on this, on, the, on this part of the letter, right? This part, see how it just goes, the part, the D, the part that's going down, right? This one's, this one doesn't need that many nodes because it's, there's no tight turns. All right, you see that? I like how it's coming. Right, so on that, we just use one, two, three, four, five up to this point. Now we're doing these curves, right? Now we need more. So it doesn't, you could put a million nodes, but what happens is if you have too many nodes, when it comes time to edit, like if you have to go back and edit a file, it's harder. It's harder to make edits with so many nodes. And that's what really what auto digitizing. If you ever see auto digitizing, they put like thousands of nodes. So it makes it even harder to did to um for this one we gotta go to. It makes it even harder. to edit. All right, let me just set these angles right here. Then I'll take out the question right now from the screen. Hold on. All right, appreciate the question. All right, I am getting to get some good questions. I do appreciate the questions you have, okay, because those are things, the same questions you've had that I'm getting right now are like questions that I've had before in the past. And I either had to answer it myself or I had to find somebody with the answers. And it was kind of hard to find people that had answers. All right, now we get to the G, right? The G was like that portion where we have so much, it's like traffic, look at all, it's like a freeway. It's like an LA freeway right here. It's like where the 110, 105, where all those freeways meet up, right? Look at that, bam, right here, right here. Um, we could just stitch it out, but I'm telling you, sometimes we get bumps or we get too much thread in certain areas. So we got to make our gaps there. All right, hold on. Let me go back. All right, I think I'm good. And then mind body. Yes, I need someone with a bit extra time to digitize a simple enough hat logo for four letters. And I'll put my digitizer there, Vitor. Everybody knows Vitor. He's like superstar digitizer. I don't know if you've used them, but four letters, he'll probably do that like in his sleep right there. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Cool. Appreciate that. T Town can open the EMB. Bam. All right. Good to know. EMB works in hat and hatch. All right. Thanks for that, Ash. Confirmation. And then Cindy, you always make your logo so smooth. Yeah. All right. Appreciate that. All right. Um, all right, we got one person where hatch cannot open. All right. So I don't know why it opens on some, but on yours it doesn't. So just try to, I don't know. All right. Um, all right, cool. We're good. And then if anybody has the answer to this, my hatch server says it does not recognize due to older version use. All right. All right. And then, Ben Bayafetti, can the O in Dodger or in general be digitized with column B? Yeah, I just use the column B. It, you could use anything, column A, column B. I mean, a close. Yeah, yeah. 
easy. You just kind of overlap it a tad bit. You know, and the O's, they're always overlap a tad bit. All right, let's talk about this G. This one's like a, could be potential headache, all right? The, this, this part, this first part, okay? Really, it's like the, the D right here, right? It's, oh, let me see if it even fits perfect. All right, it doesn't fit perfect, like here. But if we really wanted to, okay, we could take uh, H. So this is where the least nodes plays a role. All right, this is where least role, least nodes, because I could grab these and just pull them, right? If you had like a thousand nodes, it'd be kind of harder to do this, right? But since we got a whole lot less, all right, sometimes, all right, like I said, with the auto digitizing, sometimes it's just easier just to start from scratch here. I just kind of copy the paste. So actually, this is another one where it's just better to start from scratch. All right, I was just checking to see if if it, if it had the same one, but it, it doesn't. All right, bang. Then we get this one. Kind of going in a bit. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's all just rinse and repeat. And I know for me, when I'm digitizing, I just kind of zone out. I'm just like bumping music. And, and it's a whole lot faster when you're not explaining anything, right? Like right here, I'm kind of explaining stuff. And so, of course, it's going to take longer. It's going to. But speed, very important in digitizing. But the more you do something, like the easier it gets. And the faster and you start getting like pattern recognition and all that stuff. All right, we got this part, okay. Um, then I'll do this, let me see where we're at, one and a half, all right. Um, I'll do this small portion right here, but then I'll show you the final one. Kind of cut in like here. Make the other side. Keep on forgetting to take the underlay and change the color. Yeah, right. Um, really, this, I think this is what I did on my design. This one here, this, it's like 1.8, very thin sand stitch, right? So maybe here, I could probably just go straight down, right? Like if something is so thin where like it's not going to really play a role if we make a gap, okay, maybe we could go all the way down with it, right? And then that's how you, if if you see the download that I have, That's kind of like how I did it. All right, then you go down. All right, there. Then we do the other loop, all right? Let me show you here, Dodger Show. I'm going to push this. I'm going to play it on slow-mo, but you kind of see how I broke it up here. Let me see if I did make it one piece. Yeah, see, I made, I made this whole thing one piece. All this overlap, instead of trying to gap it, make tiny gaps, okay? 
Uh, I also wanted to see how much of a bump I would get in this area. Okay, so if you do see that, um, let me see. I'm looking at my sample here. Not too bad. Okay, not too bad. And then I broke this part up up here. All right, but let me push play. Let's show you how it runs. And then I'll kind of do a, a play by play. Oops, sorry about that. All right, got it there. All right, uh, let me put trims. It only has two trims. All right, that's like a big thing that I like to emphasize is trims on and then I, I i always say this like every live um trims to me that is the difficult part of embroidery or of digitizing having the least amount of trims reason why i don't like trims because i like to push play and just forget about it like you could walk away and not have any problems usually problems occur during the trims tie-ins tie-outs cuts that's when stuff happens, right? Like you turn around to go do something and it's at that moment when something happens, all right? So the, the least amount of trims and the good thing about script is that all the fonts, they're kind of like together. So they could go from one area to the next. Okay, so that's really something that I take into consideration like big time. All right, so let's push play. And I'm gonna kind of, do a play by play, right? So you can see here I have a single, uh, I have a center run with a double zigzag it's coming in. It's gonna do the transition here. It's gonna walk over here. It's gonna do the zigzag, bam. And then it's gonna do the other side of the zigzag. All right, let me speed it up a tad bit. And then here, I didn't want it to have a jump or anything because there's a little gap between the D and the lowercase letters. So instead of ending it somewhere close to the O, I just ended it all the way to the tip, to the end portion of the D, just so it could just finish its way out. All right, speed it up here. Bam. All right, bam, cuts it there. And then from here on out, there's no more cuts, okay? Because this is all cursive letter all together touching each other. So there shouldn't be any cuts. All right, so we did the O here. Bam, it's going to do the O. It's going to do this transition part. That's going to go in. All right, then it's going to go to the D. Or the D, fairly straightforward. Um, and when I saw it, uh, not too many changes that I would make. Like to me, it's good to go right now. But of course, you can always find something where you, you could, like, depending on the fabric that you're using. Um, I think it did it good on this twill that I had. So the double, the double zigzag worked out pretty good. So it's gonna go to this G and then at the end of this part, it's gonna transition to the to this overlap part. And I just made the overlap straight up. It's just it's just pretty thin, so and then Denny's zigzag versus edge run. So, like what I was saying before, sometimes the edge run, um maybe not on this font because it's pretty thick and the size is pretty big. But there are times where the edge run might want to slip out and kind of peek its head outside. Uh, you, usually, I'm just used to using um, center run on on script fonts. All right. If I if I if I had something like more plush, or I would or I see that there's gapping or anything, then I would. I would change it to an edge run, but I had it good here, All right? You could kind of see how I did my S, right? I just put it over here so it could all be one piece. 
Then I'm going to end it right at the tip of that part just so I could finish out clean. All right. And then looking at my sample, one change that I would do, okay, one change that I would do, okay, bam. It's already good, like I said, right? But you could be super picky, right? You can always be picky with your stuff. I would have made it a little bit wider up here so it doesn't finish so pointy, All right? That's just the, like the really the only little small. But like I said, this is stuff like people wouldn't notice this type of stuff, right? We're talking about a difference of a 0.2 millimeters of difference that I'm talking about, all right? That's just me thinking out loud, like when I see things. All right, bam. Cool, so let me see. All right, so reminder, okay, reminder. Uh, reminder, the file is available for free download it's going to be uh free for a couple hours okay i'm going to hang out kind of decompress all right because today has been a super super crazy day today all right i'm finally gonna like actually relax all right but uh download the file it's uh available to everybody that was on the live and everybody that was available today all right um remember we go live every monday and just as a reminder Okay, I do have uh, the Mighty Hoops. I have the candle thread here, right? Uh, free shipping. You can see it also in the description. Free shipping on the on the Mighty Hoops, right? Of course, makes life super super easy, all right? Uh, and candle thread, of course, super super nice, clean uh, thread. Especially we love it with our hats. 3D puff makes that design like just Bop, right? Really stand out. All right. Um, let me see if I have any questions. I do appreciate all the questions today. We did have some very, very good questions. All right. Uh, sometimes my brain is like locked in here, trying to explain little small details, and you kind of think outside the box, right? Everybody's brain is like all over the place, thinking outside the box, and you come up with some excellent, excellent questions. A lot of the questions that you have, trust me, I had the same questions. When I was digitizing and when I was starting. Uh, all right. I think we're good here. Uh, let's see. Bam, bam. All right, all right. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions, right, for shows, um, we're kind of like one quarter in of our shows for this year. Okay. Hey, Marisa, how you doing? Jennifer Romero, Letville. Okay, coming in late. All right, it's all good. Always on, we always on the replay just in case. Uh, Karen, appreciate that. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Aldell. And then, oh yeah, this is a, I almost forgot. The book project, all right, it's going real good, all right, real going real good. So last year I had the book like at 95% and I kind of put a pause because there's more stuff that I want to add it on. I wanted to add on. So instead of like knowing I could have made it better, okay, I just stopped and it's in the works, all right? So it is coming out later this year. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. So I do want to thank everybody. Make sure you hit that like. Let YouTube know that you had one good, awesome Monday. Okay. I'll see you next Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh -huh, Cindy. Yep. Volume one, then volume two. Tell you. All right. Um, thank you, Ben Bea. All right. Till next week, peace out, everybody.